Go ahead and we're going to put our meter back on a resistance measurement. And let's do a resistance measurement first. And we're going to basically go from that point to that point there. And we're going to measure this little bit of wire. See what happens. If you've got a wire like this on a car and you think it's faulty, how are you going to test it? Loads of different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you in this video how to test the wire proper. And I'm going to show you why people get it wrong. You're going to love this video. It's amazing. Stick around. I always told you, didn't they, at college and all these other places, oh, just do a continuity test and uh, after that everything will be okay. And uh, if it beeps, like that, like that, it's a good wire. No, bullshit, it's not a good wire, nonsense. Continuity testing is the worst thing you can do to check a wire. So what I've got here, I've got a little rig set up and all it is, it's a car battery, negative, positive. I've got my multimeter on the negative and I've got the positive of the battery on there and I'm completing a circuit, basically. So if we just look at the voltage now, We've got 12 point, what, what have we got there? 12.65, and we go to the front, 12.65. So, as you can see, even though this wire is absolutely really shitty, and it's not very conducive for electricity, in fact, it's just kind of powder, it still conducts electricity perfectly well. Similarly, if we do a resistance test, all we have there is negative and positive from the meter connected to one end and to the other end. And that's it. And as you can see, really bad cable, perfect resistance. Or is it perfect resistance? Let's do some more testing. You get yourself a bog standard H7 55 watt allergen bulb. It's sufficient enough to stress a wire, which a shitty continuity or resistance test that they taught you at training school won't do. Let's see how we can do it. All right, test number one coming up. We've got our bulb there, we've got our meter there, we've got our battery there. Let's pop her on. Oh, it's nice and bright, yeah? What have we got? Before it, we've got 12.29. What have we got after it? 12.22, not bad, not much of a job. Let's now break this up a bit and make this in much worse condition and see what we have. So as you can see, guys and girls, there's literally nothing left of that now. I've just, it's like three or four kind of strands in fact it's hardly even connected so let's check that out it's going to be dead interesting this bulb's still crazy bright isn't it but what's the voltage drop now let's go to the end of the cable here got a massive voltage drop look there you are 10.3 volts so it's a bit of a voltage drop there right the front of the cable oh it's how loose it is it's flickering front of the cable we've got 12.23 because we're measuring here to here so if this was in a vehicle now, you can imagine what would happen is if there was a bad wire and it was a normal wire and you didn't know what if there was a bad break, it could literally just be hanging on like that and you'll still get electricity flowing, no problem at all. Bright as anything, that, isn't it? Look. It's sparking a bit there, look, you see. So even with a shitty connection like that, you'll have a dead bright bulb, but you will have a voltage drop as I've just shown you. A little bit higher than it was, but it's still pretty good. 0 0.7, good continuity. You've got a good wire there, bud. Nothing wrong with your wiring, it's bang on. <laughs> even if we have it held on with just one strand, look, have it barely touching like that. Oh, nothing wrong with your wiring. Your wiring's perfect on this vehicle. Uh, I don't know why they said you had dodgy wiring. Continuity test. Bit more resistance there, but still. Oh, you've got a good wire. Nothing wrong with the wiring. Why is it the worst thing you can do? Because really, it doesn't stress the wire enough. And if you don't stress the wire enough, because this meter, it only puts it out thousands of millivolts or tens of thousands of millivolts it's not enough electrical pressure to stress the wire that's why you get a good resistance value feeding back yeah